Hi, Captain Mike here with you again. Um, this is kind of an unscheduled video on a project that I've been thinking about for quite a while. And it's going to be very informal. There's going to be a lot of gaps backing up, uh, scratching my head. I'll cut and edit as much out of it as I can. I'll try to keep you posted on what I'm doing as I go. Uh, and uh, this is more or less just kind of documenting this procedure if I can get it to work. Uh, and if you guys can gain something out of it and it makes a good video, that's fine. If not, then the public will never see it. But what I'm trying to do is make a ceramic mold kind of like this. It's going to be a round mold and it's going to be recessed in places just like these, these uh, koi fish are. This one has a lot more relief and a lot more detail than I am going to put in it. But we're going after a piece of ceramic like this so that I can put a piece of glass on top of it uh, along with colored frit and all the depressions. Put the glass on it and fire it and we come up with something like this. Uh, and this of course also is highly detailed. Uh, but, uh, let me get it where I can see you see it, yeah. But that's kind of what I'm after. Um, don't know how successful this is going to be. Uh, but we will start off with the normal stuff of, of what you're going to need and what I'm going to be using. And of course, the first thing you'll need to do is cut your round piece of glass. It does not have to be a quarter of an inch, but it does need to be the size you want it. The size will be determined by your pattern, whatever you're going to do. And I would draw the pattern basically to fit inside of a ring cut out of a five gallon drum. I'd cut my glass just a little bit bigger than that. Uh, this glass happens to be, I think, about 11 inches, 11 and a half. You figure that out yourself. Like I said, I'm not going into great detail on this because I'll get confused. Uh, I'm just going to catch you up to where I am, then I'm going to not talk a whole lot, and I'm going to start doing the actual making of the uh, mold. So what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to put our design that we've that we've come up with on this piece of glass. Uh, excuse me. See, I, I already get confused on on the piece of glass. Uh, in the case of my hummingbird here, I used a, just a piece of mirror. It doesn't matter. It's not going to, this glass is not going to be melted. So you have your design. You'll put. I use sandblast stencil. Uh, I get it from a, a sandblast. Uh, uh, supply place here in Elberton, Georgia. Uh, I, I don't know what you would use if you want to duplicate this experiment. It comes in all kinds of rolls up to 36 inches long. Uh, it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. It used to be thicker. But it's not anymore. There are two kinds. There's one kind that, that uh, uh, monumental drafting houses that use the, uh, the computerized cutting systems. They have the kind that has a plastic backing and then another plastic backing that has glue on both sides. This is stuck to that. This keeps whatever they cut out on the stencil from, uh, they pull the rubber off, but it leaves uh, a backing so they can put it on stone. Don't worry about that. There's nothing, there's nothing that you need to know about that, but that's what that is if you happen to run into some. This stencil looks like this. It's got plastic backing. It's thick like that, and it's sticky right here. If you were gonna put it on rock, I would suggest you use uh, some of the uh, filler, they call it filler, it's nothing but a latex glue. Uh, but for glass, make sure your glass is clean. Cut you a big enough piece to go on it. Uh, you know, then just put this on it, roll it down. Again, I'm, I'm not going into all that. This is, that's a whole process. You're going to end up with a piece of, of glass with a solid piece on it. Then you're going to put your layout on it and you're going to rub it and it's going to transfer. This one has uh, carbon on one side and pencil on the other. It's just a, a drawing technique, drafting technique that I learned years and years and years ago. Uh, again, you can draw on this just freehand. It's fine. Uh, but once you get that on there, you'll take a, a knife. I use old school spindle stencil knives and I cut all this out freehand. Uh, again, that's not something you need to be concerned with. Uh, it's a skill, again, that I learned back when I was very, very young and was in the granite industry. Uh, but you will, when you get all that done, you're going to, what we're going to attempt to do now is 
fix a cast, a way we can cast some plaster, because you're gonna have to cast a plaster mold first. That's what we're gonna do. And after the plaster mold is dry, we're going to cast a ceramic mold and we're gonna fire it. Now, this one here is not cut. I will cut it off screen here in just a second. But if you'll go ahead and you can see it's about two inches, it doesn't matter. It's you know, whatever you're gonna thick pour your, your your plaster to. If you'll cut it this way with a with a knife or something so that it'll you can open it up, it will remove, it will release from the plaster a lot better. Uh, so hang on and I'm gonna cut this and I'll be right back. I cut this as you can see in two here. I use a razor knife. If you don't have one of these for your shop, they come in different sizes. Uh, they're really great. They cut plastic well, metal and all. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a piece of tape and I am going to tape this thing. Uh, it doesn't take much. This masking tape will work. That's about it. That'll, that'll hold it right there for what I'm going to do. And uh, so now you need to have to roll you out some, just get you some clay. I keep a bunch of this clay on hand. It gives the grandkids something to play with when they're here, and then when they're through with it, if there's not too much dirt and bugs and stuff in it, uh, I, uh, I save it. So now what we'll do is we'll just kind of line this up as best we can on our mold, or not our mold, excuse me, our master or whatever you want to call it. And we'll start to put this thing down using this clay to hold it in place and to also keep the uh, um, plaster from coming out. At least that's the plan. Like I told you guys, this here is a uh, this is a work in progress. I mean, you're, I have a clue what I'm, what I'm gonna have here. Technically, theoretically, it's supposed to work, but I really don't, I really don't know. Uh, and what I'm going to do when I get this barrier attached as best I can here, I will mix up some plaster. Now, I've got videos on mixing plaster. Everybody else on YouTube's got videos mixing up plaster. So again, I will not bore you with that. Uh, I will mix my plaster up off screen. I will come back, pour it in here, and hope we don't have a dang big mess. All right, I have that more or less done, okay? All right, let me go mix up some plaster. Okay, the, pi <clears throat> the plaster has been mixed and poured and there are no real leaks as far as I can see, so, so far we're having a success. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what the impression on the bottom looks like once this plaster is hard. I would have preferred for the relief on my original cutting to be eighth of an inch instead of a sixteenth, uh, and that is something that I will experiment with later on. If this part of the project is a success, then I will take uh, two layers of this. I'll glue one layer on top of another and then cut out my design and it'll be a little thicker. Uh, but again, if, if this part is a failure and it doesn't work and the ceramic one doesn't come out proper, then there's no need to try to refine it. So we're gonna let this thing sit overnight. Uh, tomorrow uh, morning, I will uh, unmold it and uh, I'll let you guys share that with me. So y'all hang on for a while and we will see how this, how this experiment progresses. While I was waiting for this thing to set up um, so I could unmold it, I went ahead and took the opportunity to um, cut out another one. And uh, as I mentioned, I doubled up on the uh, stencil so that it's thicker. You can see there's, well, you actually, you can't see really, but there's two layers, which makes this approximately an eighth of an inch <clears throat> thick. Uh, and uh, I went ahead and mentioned, you don't have to cut the piece round like I did this one. Uh, I just did, uh, but if you wanted to make it square, uh, so that it's easier to work with, it's fine. Um, but let's unmold this thing right quick and see if what we have and know where we've got to go next. Okay, now we're going to see if, if, uh, let's go ahead and take the 
piece of tape off to hold this band together because that's going to make it come apart a lot easier. You see how that did. Now what you can do with this on your square one is you can set it here, retape it, line it up, and then if you wanted to you could you could put the uh, put it on just like that and you still got your mirror you can take all this off when you're through but that's just a side line, a side comment let's see if this thing is going to come off I have not a clue I didn't spray it with anything which probably would be a, a good uh, thing to do is spray some vegetable oil on that or something I did not uh, I was somewhat of in a hurry not really in a hurry I guess I just wasn't really thinking Let's see if we can find a better knife to, uh, don't want to look like it wants to come up. So it may be, to, uh, I have to go to plan B and repour this one with some release agent on it. And uh, we see what happens. Or I could wait for this one to uh, shrink up a little bit because this plaster will shrink as it dries. We'll have to see what we got. Let's do that. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and fool with this off camera, and if I get it off without tearing it all to pieces, I'll come back and talk to you about it a little bit more. But I just wanted to kind of catch you up on where we were this morning. I was hoping to be able to use these uh, masters. Uh, I can't think of a better word to call them. More than once, but. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to. Now this one I may because once I put this on it and spray it with uh, a release agent it very well may come out the first time. What I'm going to have to do with this one I think is I'm going to have to take and pull up the rubber right here. Can we, can we see this? Fine. Pull the rubber up and just pull the rubber off of the uh, off of the mirror. And it's been on there a while. I cut this this original or this master, I cut it uh, out quite some time ago. It's sitting over there in my way and I, yesterday I just decided I would uh, go ahead and, and work on this project a little bit. So it stuck better than this one would be. In fact, is the glue on the bottom of this stencil is is right tacky, but if I can get a if I can get a purchase on it without breaking the mirror, it will come up. But this is single strength mirror, where this is quarter of an inch. Uh, it may not do. It may take a while to do this. Uh, so anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be trying to peel this whole thing here off of this piece of mirror or glass whichever you want to use you could use Corian you could use anything uh, but again I just want to put that in there let me go ahead and work on that because it looks like it's going to be uh, very tedious okay I worked this old flat knife under it enough to break it loose and then just as soon as it broke the rubber broke loose from the uh, mirror this thing popped loose well, let's see what we have here. All right, that's pretty good. Whether you can see it or not, it's not high, but it's pretty good. Okay, I'll clean it up just a little bit and let it dry, and then we will go to the next uh, step on this, or next step I'm going to take, and. Actually, pretty much we saved that. I could probably use it again, but I think this one is going to be is going to be the better one of the two. I've already put the uh, collar in place. Uh, I'm also doing it a little differently, as you can see. I'm going to have some sunk areas in here where, I, if it all comes out well, I can put frit there, frit in these other. All the rubber will be a raised area when I get through with the ceramic part. So I'll go ahead and pour this one and uh, get it uh, 
ready and drying and then this one's drying and it'll take it'll take a while it'll take probably a week or better for these things to dry in the meantime I'll contemplate my next my next move and uh, you know we'll continue this saga so just kind of if you're interested in this just kind of stay in here with me and we'll see what we got and I greased this uh, mold up here uh, you can kind of see what I did I used a little vegetable uh, spray and brushed it down real good and I have my uh, <coughs> excuse me my uh, plaster already mixed so we'll just kind of pour it in here very slowly so that uh, it moves over the mold in a fashion that does not encapsulate as many bubbles as normal. And that, folks, is how I pour it for what it's worth. Alrighty. I jiggle it just a little. Any other bubbles trapped down there will come out. It causes the uh, surface here to be flat also. All right, that one's poured, we'll wait for it to set up. Okay, we're ready for the next phase of this little experiment right here. Uh, I have unmolded both of these uh, plaster uh, masters, if you will. This one, of course, was the first one that I, that I did, and uh, it was only about a 30 second of an inch of an inch thick. It's really not thick enough, but we're gonna we're gonna continue to work with this one. Uh, I have not cleaned it up or anything like I did this one, uh, but it came off of the mold just fine. Uh, I just had one layer of this uh, sandblast stencil, and uh, this one I cut another one of these out right here but I double layered the sandblast stencil so it gave me not quite an eighth of an inch but it uh, and I also changed the format from this being all sunk to pretty much just lines here so that when I make my master here which we're fixing to try in a minute uh, not my master excuse me my ceramic uh, it'll give me a different effect so with this one, I took a little tool like this and I went around all the edges and rounded them off because it makes the ceramic release a lot easier from this master. Now what we're going to do next, I took the same piece of plastic that I used to make these and this time we're going to use it for another mold. But as you can see, it doesn't come together again. There was a little expansion on the plaster. So what I'm going to do to hold it this is my first attempt at doing this anyway, is I have a rubber band, a great big rubber band. I use these on my, on my two-part mold, plaster molds that I do ceramics with. And I'll put it on down here uh, a ways towards the bottom so that it'll hold it nice and, and, uh, nice and tight. And then I'm going to take a piece of clay and again, folks, this is this is the first time I've done this, so I don't really know if it's even going to work. Uh, but we'll push the clay in here as a dam, and then put just a tad more, and then to build it up over here, I'm going to try to use some tape. I use painter's tape; it should be fine, and I fully expect to get some leakage and so we will kind of see what we got there put a little bit of clay on the inside just to help just a tad and uh, it won't hurt anything all right now we got that done here's the real the real test folks I have some low fire slip here it's just happened to be what was left in my bucket I don't use a lot of low fire slip anymore but for this because it will bisque if it if it comes out the, the 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 ceramic part will be the greenware and then I'll bisque it to 04 and uh, if that works then I can use it to uh, try to cast 
or, or you know, slump glass casting in it. The whole point is to make a, a piece of ceramic to do glass work with. That's what this is all about. Now, I'm going to pour this in here. It may be a total, complete mess. I don't have a clue. We'll just, we'll react, okay? I'm going to pour it slow as, as with anything that you pour. Let, let the liquid kind of seek its own direction. There are far less bubbles that way. And I don't have any clue how this is going to work as far as thickness goes. But I'm going to pour it up here about mm, like that. Okay, that's probably three-eighths to a half-inch thick. I'll let it sit. I may pour more in here, or I may pour out the excess for a shell. I don't know yet, because I don't know how it's going to react. But that's what we got so far. That's, that's as far as we can go on this. When this one works, if that one works, then I'll try this one just to see what I get. Uh, and uh, I'll report back to you. It'll take a couple of days for me to uh, take this out. So I'm going to let it set up. I'm not going to disturb it. And I'll be back and we'll see how this project goes. Okay. I unmolded this piece here. It's um, kind of dry. It's uh, about leather hard. but uh, And it wasn't entirely successful. I'm not exactly sure yet why, but I think I know. Uh, this is the mold, and as you can see, some of the clay pulled off. Now, the reason I think that happened uh, was because the clay shrank as it dried, and this plaster did not. So it come out in some places, but it had pulled loose his sheared in others. Um, not 100% sure, but the, right now that's my guess. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, recycle this piece right here and uh, rehydrate it a little bit and press it. Clean us, clean this mold out right here and uh, when it's dry, well it doesn't matter whether it's dry or not, it's still a little damp from absorbing all the moisture out of this piece. Uh, but I will try to roll this, take this, make it a little thinner than this, and try to roll it over this and see if I can, my roller uh, that I have will push it in here far enough. That is just my next logical step. I haven't given up on the, uh, on the pouring slip in here. It could possibly be that I molded it too fast, but I don't think so. I noticed a couple of little peculiar things as I looked at the edges of the mold while it was drying that makes me think that, that it sheared here in these places. Uh, but it, 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 it's, I'm not giving up on it yet. Uh, but just for grins and giggles, uh, I will go ahead and try pressing it and we'll see how it does. So that's where we stand right now. It does look pretty good though. I mean, you know, the possibilities are there and uh, we just have to experiment a little bit more. Okay, here's where we stand on this project um, today. Uh, I took the original piece that I showed you previously uh, that had some pieces missing that pulled out in this mold. I cleaned them out. I scraped the, uh, the, the, the round disc clean, placed it back on this, and run it through my clay press uh, and pressed it down in here and it came out really really nice it popped right out nothing stayed in here of course I did dust this just a little bit with some kind of a release stuff I have and it, uh, it it came out of that really good so I had to let it dry now mind you this was slip this was just slip that had gotten leather hard and when I pulled it off of this of course you, you pulled pieces out so we repressed it and uh, I let it dry and as it began to dry it began to form a crack right here and I kept repairing the crack front and back I have done that successfully on small pieces uh, when I this piece here became dry the crack wasn't 
uh, obvious anymore. Uh, so I put it in the kiln with some other pieces. I even put a, a large flat piece on top of this to ho you know, hopefully to hold it all flat as it fired. And uh, the crack reappeared you know, all the way to the center. And but the worst part was that it uh, came out plate shaped. It, it deformed this way. So I'm blaming that right now on uh, this being slip because this piece is unacceptable. It's just the crack was too wide uh, and uh, I don't want the finished product to have a dip in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some uh, uh, regular cone uh, 6 mid-fire clay, roll it out and then repress this and pull it out and let the cone 6 dry and refire it. That will probably be uh, the last thing that I'll do unless I come up with another brilliant idea. Uh, but I think it'll work if I can get the not to crack when it dries and mainly to fire flat, which could be any number of things that I can address. Uh, but I'm hoping that it was just the slip. It's not designed to do this. Uh, and so hopefully that's what caused it to, to, uh, to dish out. So I'm going to leave you folks with this. Go back to my press and some clay, see what we can come out with, and I'll update you when I get that done. Okay, we're uh, back here with what I hope is pretty close to the final test on this. This is the last piece that I, I made off, I and mean, I used high fire clay on this. I didn't use a uh, slip, I used a, fire, a clay body. Rolled it out about mm, three eighths of an inch thick, maybe closer to a quarter, run it through my uh, 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 slab roller with the uh, die or the plaster mold on top, if you remember that, and uh, pressed it out, let it dry. It fired almost perfectly flat, definitely flat enough for me to do what I want to do. So I have coated this with some glass release agent and I have uh, cut this piece of round float glass and this is going to be my test. So I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to fire it and we will see what kind of, a, of results we get and uh, then we'll wrap this video up. I'll kind of make a decision as to whether this is going to be something worthwhile or not. Hey you guys hang in there. This thing is coming rapidly to a conclusion. Okay I think we can Kind of wrap this video up. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it didn't start off as a video. It's more of a uh, just a filming my progress with this project. Uh, you know, we started off with with something like this, and where I had cut some stencil out on a piece of uh, mirror, and then I cast a uh, plaster. The cast of that, which of course gives me a positive, and I needed a negative so that I could. Uh, or uh, do a ceramic cast of this. And of course what I ended up with, the second try was this. And uh, this was a, a piece of high fire clay body. And the first one was slip and it warped. This one didn't warp. And I put it in the kiln on just a piece of float glass. And I hope you can kind of see that. I'm real, real pleased with it. And uh, I've got one other thing that I'm going to do right quick. I hope I don't mess this up. I'll be right back, y'all. Hang on. Okay, folks, this is uh, an idea that I'm working with on coloring some glass. I know you can't see this real good because I just jumped on it really quick. Uh, I'm going to, if this works out, when I get everything done with it, uh, I will do a complete video on, on how I do this coloration on this glass. Uh, and we won't get into it right now. I just kind of wanted to show you this uh, and say I'm very happy with it. And I'll be very happy if you guys hang with me through this video to get to this particular point. So anyway, I'm going to call this one a success. I can do it. I have a, lots of themes in mind. And I'm going to start working on them over the summer and see how many of these right here I can do. 
Okay, I've got a little bonus video for y'all that, that uh, goes along with this rather long and boring tutorial on how I made the mold uh, to uh, slump this glass in this particular case, the hummingbird and hibiscus. And the first one I showed you at the very end was a clear piece of float glass that I sprayed some paint on, uh, some clear paint just to kind of give it a little color. This is the first one that I completed that uh, is with a COE 90 glass and it's kind of a, a light turquoise blue. It turned out really, really nice. And the last one that I've done was a piece of COE 90 glass, that uh, clear glass that I uh, added frit to. Uh, which was the whole point of this experiment to be able to color the glass with frit. This worked. I wasn't sure whether what was going to happen when I filled up all of the voids with frit and fired it, whether it was going to pull all of the high ridges off. It did not actually work better than any of the commercial molds that I have. So I'm really pleased with this and uh, uh, I look forward to making uh, several others. I have some in mind, some koi fish, uh, some goldfish, and a flamenco mold. So if I deem them worthy, think that someone might care, I'll show you those when I get them done. But I'm real pleased with these, and uh, I promise you this is the end of this video. So thank you for watching. Captain Mike, and once again, I am out of here.